All right, guys. Well, let's launch a TRX, shall we? Okay. Okay. That's kind of unbelievable. <laughs> this is a, a 6,800 pound truck smoking all four tires. wanted to point this out we just did a, a three and a half second zero to 60 time that's what bead locks on that's that's ridiculous i mean 3.7 is stock i don't even know you can do something what's going on everyone my name is adam hope you enjoyed the front montage welcome back to driven nashville if you're new to the channel we produce weekly enthusiast driven car and truck content and today oh today guys when this thing came out i was so excited Behind me is the Dodge Ram 1500 TRX. This is the apex predator of the trucks. When this thing came out, you'd be lucky to get an MSRP, uh, you five, 10, 15, $20,000 of what they call ADM, additional dealer market fees, were very, very common on this truck because it was unbelievably popular. Why is it unbelievably popular? Well, it has a 6.2 liter <laughs> Hemi V8, right? That is supercharged with 11 pounds of boost. So. It makes 702 horsepower and 650 foot-pounds of torque. Unbelievable. Which allows this thing to run the quarter mile in 12.3 seconds. All-wheel drive, by the way. It does not have rear-wheel drive mode, which is one of the things we're gonna cover in this video. And it also goes to 60 in 3.7 seconds. This thing will outrun a Porsche Cayman GT4 to 60. Un unbelievable. And the other thing that you may not know about this truck is, it's got a really, really nice interior. So in this review, we're gonna be spotlighting the exterior and the interior, telling you a little bit more about the truck. I'm gonna be bringing on Kevin, the owner. You can talk about his 14,000 miles of experience with the vehicle, some of the pros and some of the cons, and hopefully you learn something. Now, I know that the new Raptor R has just come out and dethroned it, let's be honest, right? Uh, but this thing absolutely, I think, beat up on the EcoBoost Fords. Unless you're gonna go ahead and, you know, boost those things up to 600 horsepower. Really, there's very, very few trucks on the road that competed with this up until the new Raptor R. And if you have a Raptor R and you want to feature it on the channel, please reach out to me because I would love to do a roll race with these and see who wins. I'm really excited. And the, and the one thing I want to add here in this introduction is these have come down significantly in price. You would have been lucky, like I said earlier, to get this thing for $95,000, $100,000 out the door. Now you can get a nicely equipped used one for somewhere between eighty to ninety thousand dollars, which is good. And they could very well head a little bit lower than that. And I think these are absolutely a great buy, and these will very, very much become collectible in the future. They're never going to make another six point two supercharged engine like this ever again. Okay, they've already announced last call in all the Dodge models, right? You probably saw that my review when I was at SEMA. So they're never going to make this again, guys. So I hope you enjoy this review. Hope you enjoy the content as always. If you're interested in the content, please subscribe and let's get Kevin on camera and get his take. All right, guys. Thank you so much, Kevin, for uh, allowing me to review your truck today. It's awesome, dude. All right. So you had a little bit of interesting story acquiring this vehicle, did you not? Yes, I originally looked at the Raptor. Um, I've had a whole bunch of turbo vehicles in the past. Wanted to do the usual turbo mods, crank it up. Uh, and with the chip shortages and insane ADM, uh, yep. I decided to look at other options. Fortunately, I found this guy. Um, I called around, I wanted to deal locally. They originally wanted uh, 10 over. 10, okay. Um, this was in November, so a full year ago. Yep. Um, I told them, how about five? They said, I'll get back to you, and then they accepted it. And I was happy at the time, a year ago, I think that was fair. Um, from, I the, from the time you did that to when you got it, how long was that roughly? 17 weeks. So they told, that was another weeks. thing. They told me, I think 14 or 15, and they almost nailed it. It was 17 weeks, which is fine with me. That's pretty good. Um, Ford told me they couldn't tell me when they would get one. Um, they said they were getting roughly 10% of their inventory 
they would usually get at that moment. So, so Dodge was a little more on their game. Yeah, different chip huh? supplier. I don't know what, but yeah. they're all over it. Um, okay. And so that was an easy decision for me. Um, and yeah, I love this truck ever right. since. So that's the elephant sure. in the room, you paid five over. Yep. So not too bad, right? No. And this is like fully loaded, except it doesn't have the carbon fiber. Yeah, it's got everything right? but the carbon fiber. I I just couldn't justify putting carbon fiber on a 65, 6,800 pound truck. Right. Didn't seem yeah. right. Yeah. So we'll show you the interior in just a second, guys. So 14,000 miles. Have you had any issues with the truck? Um. Yeah, no issues. No I issues. Mean, no, not one. Just, nope. Just I mean, other than going to the pump, <laughs> yeah. that's the only issue. So when you're on the gas on this thing, how much gas? Like, how much does it drink? Like, legitimately. Uh, so the range I've seen, I took it to um, Asheville, North Carolina, to the Blue Ridge Mountains. Got 14.6 okay. on the way there. Okay. So Which highway, is, it's pretty good. Yeah. It's got um, an eight-speed transmission, by the way. Yep. Very, very smooth. All that. Um, the worst it's done, I took it to sand, uh, Silver Lake Sand Dunes in Michigan. Okay. It got three. <laughs> so that's the range, three to 14.6. So, so if you're just roll racing this thing all day long, you're getting four miles a gallon. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but hey, I mean, that's the downside of just having driving it around, time. having fun, but you know, not being ridiculous. It gets about 11, I'd say. Right. Um, this is all stock, right? These are the 35 inch tires that you've got on it, right? Uh, I think these are 18 inch wheels. Yep, I did. Milstein stocks, right? Yep, I did the bead locks because uh, okay. we've got, we go to Michigan a lot and the Silver Lake sand dunes are something to behold. So I'll probably, I probably will flip it and, uh, you know, put the bead on the outside and lock it down eventually. This yep. thing pulls like you wouldn't believe in loose sand. Unreal. Really? Like, you know, you'd think it just kind of dig yeah. and sit. Yeah, it's it heavy. rips. Ugh. Absolutely rips. Man, it's such a, it's such a cool vehicle, man. It really is. Uh, it's it, it's a man's truck, you know? Yeah. Uh, all right, have you done any upgrades to the truck? So the you've done a few things, right? Yeah, the only, uh, the only changes I've made um, are this uh, Retrax Pro XR. Um, nice. Tonneau cover, uh, it locks, it's hard, yep. you, you can actually sit on it. Um, right. And then uh, this Rhino rack, you know, rack and uh, luggage carrier system in here. Um, this uh, Tonneau cover has, a, has like a canister back there. Takes up a little bit of space. Put this back on top, get a whole bunch of space back. Right. Um, I can still fit my kiddos go-kart in it take it to the track all that and then i like that this has already got a nice coating on it too they charge yeah. extra for this or is this just stock uh that was an option i believe okay. and there's and no it, there's no step up back here so that's one thing ford does have so right? it has this okay so it's got all that right. step so that's their patent that's technology. their yeah that's their version that's nice though the ford one can be a drag too sometimes so yeah so that is cool that's one thing that uh, i do like about the raptor very nice yeah, um, I do tow with this. I've got a box trailer that I tow around. Um, so it does have the tow package. It has, you know, integrated brake controller, all that. Okay. Um, tow mirrors, which are actually huge. I love these on the street, actually, with the wide angle. But oh, the way wow. Dodge does it, they just flip up. Yeah. Super easy. Cool. Uh, you don't need to adjust anything. And guys, you know, just want to point out real quick, man, all of these are functional. And it just gives it such a mean, aggressive look. Uh, they're, all, they're integrated on the front. And they're also here on the back. Now, I don't know if these are functional. Those ones no, These are not. Those but are the ones the on the front car. are. Yep. They uh, suck all that heat on that 5.2 liter engine. And this thing will, I think, Ford, what, like three feet of water? Yeah, uh, it 30 has, something uh, inches for sure. It has like yep. 13 inches of ground clearance too. Yep. So really, really off-road capable, like you were saying earlier. And just look at the front. I mean, is that thing menacing or what? <laughs> you got the tow hooks up here the massive big old angry intake here with the lights and they Ugh. the ram has cut out right to let maximum air in oh, there it's, it's so pretty cool, cool. it's it, it is it is aging so well so the you know obviously the engine is what you know got got people to the door but i tell you what the the dampers on this thing the suspension unreal in the sense of how uh the Comfort. different well, I would say the range is what I'm getting at because uh -huh. it has so many modes. I mean, I, like I said, I took it out to the sand dunes, put it in Baja. It's all squatty. It's right. rear biased, all that. But driving on the streets here, stiffing it up and it's it's fun. It doesn't roll around. I mean, how many trucks could you have, you know, 13, 14 inches of uh, ground clearance 
and, and it can not do be both, boaty. Yeah. right? Or yeah. it can be that's what I mean by comfort. It can be sporty, and they could also you know have that off road capability. Yeah, you're exactly. Right. They, they, the, the, these are uh, Bilstein, right? Yep. Uh, remote. They've done really really well. I'll show you these real quick, guys. And I don't know if it'll pick up on the lens or not. And they also have massive 15 inch brakes, which you can't even see. Um, so let's pop the hood and show folks the uh, what's underneath this bad boy. What's underneath. All right, boys, here you go. We're gonna take the cover off this thing for you so you can see it. Yep. Oh, Lord. <laughs> well, there's another, <laughs> that's a massive air intake, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> that, Look at that. They weren't messing around. That is so cool. Yeah, right? That was the whole, that was the whole fun part, right? I mean, they have, they have this eating, they have the T-Rex eating, eating the, the Raptor. Raptor. Yeah. <laughs> you can see the big uh, blower you gotta back in You there. gotta love car rivalries, right? Yeah, there we go, boys. I got this thing looking about what you can. I mean, you can see that is a heck of an engine. If you know much about these Hellcat engines, they're they're pretty much best of breed if you're if you're a horsepower and you're a V8 guy. I mean, they've got insane amount of tuning, you know, capability. Pretty bulletproof. The only negative is they consume a lot of gas, but you know, you do get that back in power and performance. All right, Kevin, why don't we show them the interior of this thing? It's really impressive, guys. So we talked about the engine, obviously, also the dampers. The thing that I like most is actually the interior of this thing. It's it's on par or rivals. My wife's uh, mocking GTS. Um, wow. They've got the Alcantara the in here. Yeah, Alcantara. Everything's leather wrapped. Nice. Um, nice. Heated, cooled seats. Insane sound system. Dude, the dash in this thing is hot, too. I love that you have the use of TFT screens and the physical gauges. Very, yep, very a lot cool. of uh, buttons too. So you can use the 17 inch screen or whatever that is, or if it's common, they usually have a uh, physical button, which is excellent. Yep. Love this too, right? You have the use of different materials on the seat. Lumbar is unbelievable. I have lower back problems. This thing is, I've driven it nine hours straight, no problem. And look at the moonroof too. Awesome. So cool. And then this is cool, guys. There's a plaque in here. Now, one of the things that Kevin was telling me earlier is in the summertime, that thing roasts you. Oh, yeah. So be careful. Uh, I'll take a picture of this and show this as a quick little B-roll clip there. Uh, and then you also have a ton of storage space like you get on most vehicles and most trucks. Guys, I mean, the interior, I mean, the screen here. Why don't we jump in here in, in a second? We'll, uh, we'll show them what's on the screen. You do have the push start right over here. And nice steering wheel. Again, you have the Alcantara right up here. This could eventually, this could have been carbon, uh, but uh, yeah, just, just, just awesome, man. The, the use of materials, all this is leather, nice stitch lines. And you were telling me the Harman Kardon sound system is pretty awesome too. Yeah, it's unreal. So the let's back, take a look back here. Yeah, the uh, uh, cab here is full size. Yeah. So it's uh, awesome. You fit three did, grown did, men back did, there, did no problem. Did these come? These, these, these came with it or is yep. this aftermarket? Yeah, and then, uh, then also it's got the uh, this little fishing oh, nice. container, whatever, Ooh, you know, you can put you ice in there, oh, put beer. thing in the middle there like the Raptors do, that's an upgrade? You can uh, actually get the a center little, console. Yeah, the center console can actually I don't think so. I'm sure they sell that aftermarket. Yeah. Man, you even got speakers up here in the back here. Is yep. the window open up? Uh, with, yeah, that's like it's electronic. Nice. So cover, you that's a, for that. Yep. That's and even up here, button. you know, up here doesn't have Alcantara or anything like that, but it is just nice, nice material. And just look at the details, guys. Like even the grab handles have a nice leather stitch on them. You just don't see this in this class. I mean, it, Dodge is just kicking butt, man. Yeah, the other trucks are gonna have to pay, play catch up. I, I tell you what, I haven't seen the new Raptor R, but this this is nicer than the EcoBoost Raptor we reviewed. Even mine, I used to have a Ford uh, Raptor, I had a Roush edition. This is a nicer interior, it just is. Nicer, nicer looking, nicer quality materials. I like the design better, especially from the uh, driver's point of view. That's just one hell of a looking good cockpit. So let's jump in the truck and show them the interior screen, what it does. All right guys, so sitting in the king's chair here, starting it up here, put your foot on the... Uh... Oh yeah. Nice throaty V8 sound. Cool screen startup. All right, so check out some of the fun stuff. Why don't you run us through what this thing can do? Um, so obviously when you're using this, you know, you're usually on uh, CarPlay or whatever you know, music, all that. But the coolest stuff on here are all these pages here. So performance, um, this is kind of cool. You can 
you know, time yourself to 60, quarter mile. Uh, wow. It's got reaction, 60 foot, the whole deal. Um, oh, you can do a man. gauge menu, oh, so which is cool. pretty cool. That's so cool. Um, oh, yeah. It doesn't list boost. Dino though. engine. Yeah, so this is like real time, I'm assuming, based on the load on the engine. Yep. Shows you power, torque. Um, <laughs> this is pretty cool. In a truck. Yeah. This is something the uh, you know the Hellcat you know Red Eye I would expect, but not a truck. How cool. Yeah. So it's got yep. you can see your so G-force. This, this does have the same as the Ford, then yeah. And then uh, yeah, this is showing you the state there, of the and, and differentials. And I said earlier, there is no two-wheel drive. It's four-wheel drive all day. All, every, there's yeah. no way to switch that off. Well, you need yeah you need to go through the OBD2 and okay. bypass all of this. I see. Um, so you can shut it off. And it's hilarious. If you warranty. do that, all these lights just start blinking bright red at you. They get angry. Yeah, now. they're like, uh, you're about to do something Yeah, dumb. so really, there it is. Four-wheel drive auto, four-wheel drive high. So I assume you do high or just... Just leave it on auto. What okay. I do is switch the modes. So you can see I've got a custom one over there. Yeah. Um, I'll show you what that is real quick. Sure. So if you go back to drive modes on the screen here... Um, It'll load in a second. So auto looks like this. Um, everything's street. Paddle oh, wow. shifters are on. That's so neat. You can change. I have those. a custom one where I put stability control to sport and suspension to sport. That's just mm -hmm. fun around here in Middle Tennessee in the hills. You want it a little stiffer. Um, and then, like I said, I've used this mode as well, Baja in the sand, um, and it's its own mode. The transmission goes to Baja. It revs higher stability control it's very rear bias suspension super soft in the rear um it's a lot of fun man this thing you feel like the king of the road guys we're gonna do a point of view drive here in just a minute but this this <laughs> i might buy one of these man i love them i i just think these are the cool and then this is this is pretty cool too the the third mode so we showed you the first to the third uh, option here uh, you can actually set the preload the transmission rpm on launch control oh wow that's pretty. <laughs> wow. I haven't messed with it. Have but you ever launched it? Only once. All right, so we're going to launch it today. Right? Yeah, for yeah, sure. We're going to launch it today. It was built for it. All right, guys. Well, I got to say, this interior is so impressive. You also have the ability from additional aux switches here for external lights, I assume. So the, yep. That's very similar with EcoBoost. And then there's also a lot of buttons up here as well. So Yeah, so this is just the, uh, the rear window. It's electric. Yep. Um, and then obviously you've got the sunroof, but then also the the shade for the kiddos uh, this opens up right the, oh yeah the, the, oh yep so this goes oh. the top section goes all the way back see that's awesome guys i love a good sunroof god this thing just has everything i mean that i'd use that all the time in the summer heck yep. yeah very impressive really really impressive is there anything else to cover i mean does this does this big screen play media is it possible? Uh, to you do need, that? What is that? Uh, what's it called? A magic stick or something? It doesn't like watch a movie or does something. It, yeah. Does it do that? Like a Tesla of the world? Um, you need a magic stick and you just plug it into one of these USB ports down here. And it actually works. Oh yeah. Because it looks like it has the color and clarity to do it. Oh yeah, hundred oh, percent. Um, so cool. From the factory, so, they don't you know, want. If you're to... sitting uh, in a, you know, you know, for hours, right, doing something, you can watch a movie. Yep. That's so cool, guys. If, if, this, if this doesn't impress you and you're a truck guy, I don't really know what, what does. I mean, it's it's just a higher level than the Raptor that I own for years. And we're going to be reviewing very, very soon a brand new 2020 with the newest, latest 37A package and all that. So we'll see how that holds up. But in the end of the day, I think that hands down, this is one of the nicest truck uh, interiors I've ever seen. And notice this is your launch button. So I guess you just hold that down. We got to put it in drive. Yeah, you hold down both but, pedals. Um, It'll tell you what to do. And you can also do your shifting here. Is that right? So you have the ability yep, to Yep, and it's got paddles shift. up here. Oh, my God. You can also flip it to the left and, and use paddles. it. And paddles. Ooh, that's so cool. All right, I'm excited to drive it. Let's, do it. Let's go do it. All right, guys, in the TRX here, I'm using the new shoulder mount. So hopefully this is better than the uh, head mount. Um, so we'll see how it looks. Start her up here. Love that startup screen. I will give I will give the Ford fans credit. They it does have an awesome startup screen as well. But that looks pretty hot. I will tell you just first impressions. As you can probably see with the camera, you sit up really high in this bad boy. You are the king of the world driving this thing. 
And immediately when you touch that gas, you just know that there's a ton of power in this truck. I mean, you could just push it ever so slightly and it feels like you have torque for days. And the eight speed is just incredibly smooth. Uh, most modern transmissions are these days, but this thing feels great. Just buttering around here, going through the neighborhood as we get onto the public roads. Very comfortable. You do feel, I mean, these, these uh, Bill, is it Bilstein? Yes. The, the, you do feel everything in the road. Uh, you know, that's just the nature of most trucks that I've ever driven, especially when they have upgraded shocks and performance and suspension. Uh, so that is noticeable, but it is comfortable. You know, but just know, you know, if you're going to be going over a bunch of rocks and bumps and speed humps, you're going to know it. Uh, it sounds so good, too. So let's get out of the uh, neighborhood here and we'll pick it back out up. Out of the neighborhood here. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in manual mode. So let's see here. You can shift it in multiple ways. You have the ability to shift it down here with your hand and you also have the paddles on the steering. God, that sounds good. There's just nothing like that supercharger sound that is so unique to the Hellcat engines. And there's very few vehicles. You know, the old Cobra Mustangs had the Whipple chargers. Those sounded incredible. But these engines, they sound so good. Yeah, I mean, it shifts pretty good. Does a little bit of a delay. It's not quite dual clutch fast. And again, I'm just babying it right now. I'm just getting a feel for her. You do have eight speeds, as I've mentioned before. Definitely know you're driving a truck, though, when you hit the turns. You know, you, you sit up high, you feel the weight. What is this guy doing? Wow, perfect. We're actually going to have some room to gallop. Oh, the torque. Wow. Yeah, it's fast. <laughs> I mean, Jesus. <laughs> that, that, that's a fast truck, boys. That's a really fast truck. That, this thing's going to get you some trouble. Yeah, real fast. <laughs> I don't even think I got 100% throttle there. I think I got close, but wow. I mean, you just have all the torque anywhere in the power band. If you're doing two kick. Yep. Oh, wow. Woo. Yeah, it gets up and goes, boys. It really does. It's a fast car, or fast truck. It's got a nice heads-up display here as well. I don't know if it, the camera's going to pick that up. I will say the shifts, you know, if you're used to the modern dual clutches, you're used to the Porsche PDKs, you're going to be a little disappointed, but it's not, it's not turning me off in any way from the vehicle. And uh, let's put it back in regular mode. I'm going to slow down here and then we're going to see if it shifts a little bit faster. Oh, right now, here, let's look. Yeah. How do I do modes? There we go. Drive modes. So right now it's on that custom one that I made. Okay and paddle shifters are on. Transmission is street. You can put that to sport or Baja. So let's just try sport. So this, okay. is, this, is default, yeah, there you go. this is default sport mode, ready? Yeah, it shifts pretty hard, guys. Man, it's fast. That's unbelievable. It squats great. And because you have all wheel drive, it puts the power down like it's nothing. Man, it's amazing how you can move a 6,800 pound vehicle, right? God, and have that kind of aggressive launch. Jeez. Yeah, this thing, this thing is just, uh, I think I'm gonna buy one of these, man. I swear to God. I'm not gonna buy one immediately, but uh, once the garage is finished, I think I'm gonna have one of these in there. Because, you know, you need something to haul the race car to the track, right? And I don't want to use it every day, but when I need a truck, this is this is like the go-to, right? You know, we take the boys, put them in the back, go to the range. I think all this is going to be very well enjoyed. And in sport mode, as you can see, it does go ahead and low, you know, go ahead and, you know, put you in a slightly higher gear. It obviously would downshift instead of having fuel economy. 
but it feels good. And you can watch the gas tank go down as we as we put our foot into it. <laughs> I have noticed that. Yeah, you do hear the tires a little bit. Uh, it's definitely not the quietest vehicle with these big old aggressive, you know, off-road tires, but not too bad. I've heard definitely worse off-road country tires than these. All right. And it's, it's sporty. I mean, the weight of the steering, it's not a sports car, but it definitely, I feel like I have control over the front wheels at all times. You know, it's not boaty in any way, other than the fact that when gravity hits, you know, the thing tends to squat a little bit, but not bad, all considering. And that engine, man, you just, you have immediate torque and immediate power. It's so much better than the EcoBoost from that point of view. You know, the EcoBoost for me would either be too much power or not enough, especially with that 10-speed transmission. And I'm just referring to the 2017 Roush edition that I had. It would be great from first, second, third, and fourth, but if once you got to fifth gear, it would, it would bog a little bit. So what I mean by that is it would be great in the boost, it would shift to fifth, and then the boost would cut, and that would either cause one of two things, either you to push your foot down a little bit more, which would then either downshift, and of course, you'd be over boosting at that point, or you would just basically lose all your power. And it kind of caused me to hate the truck. When I did my review about it in 2017, I, I, I noted that, and you know, several people commented that they didn't have the same problems with their transmission. Maybe it was just my truck, but it was actually one of the main reasons why I sold that truck, because uh, I just couldn't stand the transmission. It just, was, it just never felt like it, it was doing what I wanted it to do. I can tell you with this thing, let's, let's, uh, I mean, we're in sport mode, so let's put it into auto, I guess. Would that be the default? Yep. All right, so, and by the way, we're going to turn around and that's your launch spot. All right. Oh, it's so good. I mean, that's 100 miles an hour, boys. Like, nothing. Unbelievable. I mean, effortless downshifts in automatic. I would have thought that was almost sport mode. I mean, the power that this thing has, I mean, 650 foot-pounds of torque, unbelievable. It, it, it's probably underrated, frankly, because it feels more than 650 foot-pounds of torque. I mean, because it just moves a vehicle with such effortless ease. It's 6,800 pounds. It just it makes it feel like nothing. Unbelievable. You now, when I was at SEMA a couple of weeks ago, I really, really was impressed with their entire team, right? The PR team, what they were doing with the new Last Call editions, you know, what they were doing with the new Banshee. I mean, they're just crushing it, you know, and, and this is just a testament to that. There's a reason why these things were so popular and going over MSRP, because they're just so damn good, guys. They're such good trucks. They're such good drivers. Now, real quick, guys, I just wanted to point out that as we're heading back here, it does have Distronic Cruise Control. I believe that's how you pronounce it, which means it, it's going to keep you, you know, all the way to, I think, zero, right, uh, in, in, uh, in traffic. And that's a really nice feature. You know, my, uh, a lot of my older, older vehicles don't have that. So we've got it activated right now, and it's just keeping me, you know, wherever this guy's doing at a nice pace. So just note that. It doesn't have full self-driving, doesn't have lane keep or anything like it that does, it does oh it does yep well never mind yep. well, how do you activate that uh so it's it that icon turns green when it when it whenever it recognizes it it's on okay so what does that mean right now uh, if you let go of the steering wheel it'll correct you okay it'll correct me but it's not self-driving no, no okay no. yeah on, on the highway it'll keep you in the lane but probably not on a country road okay that's cool though that it has that feature. Yeah, on the highway it works pretty well. Oh, I'm glad uh, we, we have you, that. If, if you keep your hands off for like, you know, however many seconds, it'll beep. And if it beeps again, it turns off, but they gave you this button to turn it right back on up there. Oh, nice. <laughs> well, I gotta say, I, uh, I think the driving experience is uh, better than I even anticipated. I think this is one of the most, uh, I mean, it was one of the most overrated products, but now that they've come down in price, I actually think now it's one of the most underrated products for the money. 
uh, that I've that I've actually reviewed probably in all of 2022. Uh, honestly, like I I know it's great when I review it and then I want to buy it. You know, like and this I'm get, I'm getting that vibe. Like okay, I'm gonna start looking on Car Gurus tomorrow. You know. Well, guys, if you made it this far into the video, this is our conclusion, and sincerely thank you for watching. We hoped you learned something. I really enjoyed Kevin. I think he did fantastic on camera, sharing his perspective on everything. The interior of this thing is unbelievable. For a truck, I mean, come on. The Alcantara, the leather, the use of materials, the extra stitch lines, the console, the massive center screen, it's like 12 inches, right? Unbelievable. The 6.2 liter Hemi engine, never to be produced again, guaranteed to be collectible, right? In 20 years, like, this thing's gonna be a dinosaur. Everything's gonna be electric, right? And you're rolling around on one of these, like, come on. It's gonna be just as cool, if not cooler, than it is today. Although I'm sure the environmentalists are going to be throwing paint at and everything else, so there's going to be that. You're going to have to deal with it, unfortunately. But right now, it is awesome. As far as uh, the overall package, look, I know the Ford guys are going to say that it, can, it doesn't tow as much as the EcoBoost. That is true, but it's by 100 pounds. I mean, it's, it's like splitting hairs here, right? This thing can still tow something like 8,000 pounds. I think it's 8,300 or something. So plenty of usability. If you need an F-250 or you need to go with a 2500 series diesel, go for it, right? But if you're looking for something that is zero to 60 in 3.7 seconds, right? That sounds this good, that's easy and practical to go to any gas station in the world. Yeah, I don't think you're gonna be able to beat the TRX Ram 1500, right? So hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, subscribe, share this with any friends you think might uh, like it. We really appreciate you watching as always. We do this every single week and we're just so blessed to have you watching. We'll talk to you guys later.